In the last video, we created a simple chat application using PHP and we were also able to send messages and communicate in plain text from the command line. And in this video, we will make the application compatible with the WebSocket protocol. This enables us to program the client side application using JavaScript, which runs on web browsers. For that, we have to modify our code according to the specifications given in the RFC 6455 document, which deals with how to perform the handshake between the client and the server, how to mask and unmask the data, how to add the headers and so on. We will not be going into the details of all the sections given in the document as it's quite complex and time consuming. Instead, we are only interested in the essential things required to make our application work. Based on that, we want to create three new functions. Inside our project directory, create a new file called functions.php. Then include that file in the socket.php file. Now let's go to the functions.php file and start defining the functions. The first one is function unmask which unmasks the data sent by the client to the server. The next one is function pack data which prepends the necessary headers before sending the data from the server to the client. And the third one is function handshake which performs the WebSocket handshake. Let's start with the unmask function. To learn more about it visit section 5 of the RFC document. It says data is transmitted using a sequence of frames. Also, a client must mask all the frames sent to the server. So, in order to decode the plain text data from this masked data, the server needs to calculate the payload length, masking key, offsets and the payload data. That's what this function is doing. First, let's calculate the payload length. The ORD function takes the second character of the data string sent by the browser and calculates its ASCII value. We know that a single character is 8 bits long or 1 byte. However, according to the specification, the payload length is only 7 bits long. So we need to convert the 8 bit ASCII value to 7 bits. That's why we use the bitwise AND operator with 127. To get a better understanding, visit section 5.2, Base Framing Protocol, which shows the diagram of a frame. According to this diagram, the first 9 bits are fin, rsv1, rsv2, rsv3, opcode and mask in order. We will not be dealing with any of them directly in our application, so let's leave them. The payload length starts after that. If the value of the first 7 bits is 125 or lower, then that's the payload length. Otherwise, if it is 126, then we have to take the following 16 bits as well as the payload length. Else, if it is 127, then take the following 64 bits. The masking key comes after the payload length. It will be 4 bytes long or 32 bits. So we also need to calculate the offset of the masking key based on the payload length. So if the length equals 126, then the masking key will be characters 4, 5, 6 and 7. And the data will be the remaining characters from character 8. Else if the length equals 127, then the masking key will be the characters starting from 10, 11, 12 and 13. And the data starts at the 14th character. And finally if the length is 125 or lower, the masking key will be characters 2, 3, 4 and 5. And the data will be the remaining characters from character 6. And the actual payload data masked using the masking key comes after that. Section 5.3 shows how to use the masking key to decode the data by using a combination of bitwise OR operator and modulo 4 of the masking key. Now inside a for loop, 
unmask each of the characters in the data stream and store it to the variable text finally return the variable text the pack data function performs just the reverse it calculates the binary value of the header part based on the payload length and concatenates it with the data before sending it to the client. However, there is a small difference. Unlike the client, the server should not mask the data. So there is no need to assign a masking key or to calculate the masked value. Here the pack function packs the data into an appropriate binary string depending on the length. The first parameter of the pack function is the format code. It denotes the bit length. For instance, the uppercase letter C represents unsigned character which is 8 bits long. Finally, return the header concatenated with the text. Now comes the function handshake. We will call this function when a new client joins the chat. To learn how to implement the handshake, visit section 4 of the RFC document. There you can see that the client must initiate the handshake with a valid HTTP request. The request URI usually starts with the WS protocol. Also, the request must contain a header field called sec websocket key it's a random value set by the client from that value the server needs to calculate the sec websocket accept header it's a base64 encoded hash of the sec websocket key concatenated with the globally unique identifier string along with that the server also needs to send the 101 switching protocols status code and also the upgrade websocket and connection upgrade headers as part of the response header. The function handshake accepts the request header as a parameter and from that we have to extract the individual header lines. To do that we will take the help of regular expressions. Here we are storing each of the header fields into an array called headers. This allows us to extract the sec websocket key header. From that we will calculate the sec websocket accept header value using a combination of base64 encode, pack and sha1 hash functions. Then create the response header string which contains the sec websocket accept header. Finally, write the response header to the client using the socket write function, thereby completing the handshake process. Let me correct a few typos. String length is a function, not a variable. Also, matches of 1, it's the index, array index. Back in the socket.php file, we have already included the functions.php file. Then go to the if loop where we listen for new connections. There we want to add the websocket handshake. So below the socket accept function call, read the request headers using the socket read function. Below that call the function handshake and pass the request header as the first argument. And for the reply, we cannot write it as plain text. Instead, convert it into a data frame using the pack data function we defined in the functions.php file. Scrolling down and inside the for each loop where we read the messages from the chat clients, 
we have to unmask the data frame now the variable message contains the chat message in plain text format also pack the message before writing it to the clients don't forget to replace the variables i think the variable name should have been packed message instead of masked message but anyway let it be like that for now now our php server is almost ready for receiving websocket connections however we haven't created the client application yet we will do that in the next video and in this video i will show you an alternative way to test websocket connections from the client for that i am going to use an npm package called ws cat it's a command line utility that allows you to open websocket connections from the terminal so first we need to install node.js and npm on the local machine here i am going to install node.js from the node source repository Now perform a package update by running the command sudo apt update. Now let's install Node.js. Check the installation by printing the version numbers. If we search the npm repository, we can see the ws cat package we want to install. We want to install it globally, so don't forget to add the dash g flag. You might also want to run it as sudo to avoid permission issues. Okay, ws cat is now successfully installed on our system. Opening the help page, we can see that WS Cat offers several options, and we want to use the dash C option to connect to a WebSocket server. Before that, we have to start the Socket server. So let me go inside the PHP Docker container and run the socket.php file. After that, open another terminal tab, which is going to act as the client. Inside that, run WS Cat dash C URL of the socket server. That's it. The connection is successful. Let's type some message hello, and it gets printed back. Let's connect one more user to the chat. So let me open another terminal and connect using WS Cat. Type a message hi, and it's displayed to both the users. So our chat system is working as expected. I will place the client terminal side by side so that you can see it better. The chat conversations are showing up nicely for both the users. We can also add more than two clients if required. It works even if there is only one client. In the next video, we will create a proper frontend for the chat application using JavaScript and HTML. So don't miss that. Thanks for watching.